We asked Steve Young, okay, does that mean all the pressure is on this upcoming year? Because it might be Debo or Brandon or somebody's gone after this year. How much pressure does that put on this year? Listen to how Steve chose to answer that question. The most pressure was last year, right? Because last year the, the Rams are down. The, 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 the whole division's down. Seahawks are down. The Cardinals are way down. You know, in the playoffs you play a Packer team that's been middling the whole time. you got an up-and-start Lions squad. You're like, that's how we get to the Super Bowl. And then you play a down-year Chiefs team. Like, of all the times that you're set up to do it, that was it. But since the Ravens at Christmas, I mean, we just weren't the same. And, you know, we held... Patrick Mahomes, the 19 points, you could have told me, look, Patrick Mahomes won't score three touchdowns. We're not going to win that game? Like, you know, you're not going to walk over the Packers? We're not going to walk over the Lions? Like, things were haywire from Christmas on, and that's why last year was the time with the best roster in football to go get it done. And the fact is it didn't happen. That happens. It happened to me. I get that. But now next year, I think the Rams will be better. I think, the, the, you know, Marvin Harris will make the cards better. The Seahawks will be better. The Lions will be better. The Packers will be better. Like, it's going to get better, and uh, and we're not. We're probably not, I don't know if we'll get better, but hopefully we can stay the same and start and still beat the Reagan file with this amazing roster we have and the way that we are innovative, we deploy the guys in, on offense, then, yeah, great. But I just, what, what, what just happened was a big miss. It just was. It was, it was too bad. That right there is... Just the way he said it, too, right? It's real talk. Yeah. It's absolutely real talk. And um, you know me, like, I, I, I think the world of this team, and I will never not be optimistic about it, but I'm also, and I won't use the word realistic, because that's a stupid word. I hate that word when it comes to sports. Right. Um, but, but what I am is aware. Um, and, and this season upcoming, I believe that we 49er fans are going to have a hard time at times, because we are waltzing around like right now, like when they put uniforms on, they win. That's just how it works. Right. Then and, and so we joke, we play win loss. I pulled that schedule out yesterday and we talked about it for an hour. People, that thing is hard. That's that's what that schedule is. Right. That is incredibly hard and in, in obvious ways and nuanced ways. Like you you've talked about how many times do they play in a team that's coming off of their bye? Four. Four times. Four times. Almost a quarter of their schedule is against teams that will be coming off of a week of rest. And one of them, the Niners are coming off a mini bye because they play yep. Thursday, so they, you know, it's kind of a week and a half. But still, to your point, four times they play teams coming off a full week of rest. Are they going to be healthy? Don't know. Right. Like, is one of the big, big debilitating injuries going to happen? Is it going to be a Purdy or a McCaffrey or a Bosa Trent Williams. or a Warner or something like that, which it wasn't last year? I know Dre in the Super Bowl, and look what happened. Yeah. The game turned. So is, is that going to be okay? What about the other teams out there? Largely, the NFC was cream puff city, even in places where we didn't think it was. We're like, ooh, Cowboys, Eagles, <laughs> Cowboys, right. Eagles. Playoff wins, none. Both of them. Get out of here. You're both frauds. And there really wasn't much in the 49ers' way. And the teams they beat in the playoffs were very, very young. Green Bay, right. youngest team in football, and Detroit, inexperienced. And you could argue the Niners got outplayed in both of those games. Good point, yeah. Okay, and they came away victorious uh, for the reasons that they came away victorious. But, but to look at this this year and go, all right, now you're matched up against the AFC East which means a December roadie to Buffalo. Right. It means a Monday nighter against Aaron Rodgers. It means a trip to Miami to face Tyreek Hill. All of that's hard. And who's the one-off AFC team that you also play? They call themselves the Chiefs. Right. Like, oh, my God, this schedule is so, so difficult. Right. When you laid it out yesterday, you talked about five, two separate five-game win streaks. Exactly. I can almost promise you there's no way in hell that's going to happen. Well, last year they started out 5-0. and oh, uh, Correct. And, you know, I put in a five-game win streak after an opening week loss to the Jets where many people coming at me on Twitter, oh, Dibs, you're an idiot, and the Jets this, and the Jets that. <laughs> Steiny mentioned it in the crossover. They are favored in all 17 games. 
So if you go according to Vegas, they go 17 and 0. That's absurd, by it the way. It is absurd. And as we get closer to some of these games, you're going to realize that you know they won't be favored in some. And I do think that that Buffalo game is a scheduled loss. The second half of a two-game road trip, Buffalo coming off of their bye. So if I was going to pick one game right now of the 17 that I would predict, if I was to bet a thousand bucks against the Niners in one singular game. That would be the game that I would bet against him right now. Exactly. Buffalo, second game of a road trip. Buffalo off a bye in December. Second straight cold game on the road at Buffalo. That's the thing. That's a tough one. So when you start to look at the schedule spots, and I do think that Arizona is interesting because they're going to be better, and you go to Seattle on a Thursday night, short week for both, well, you don't and know, Seattle's going to be better. You don't know who's going to be surprisingly good. Right. A couple of years ago, Seattle was like a deal. Like it was a thing that the 49ers had to deal with. Right. And uh, then last year they weren't. Uh, will they be again? I don't know. Are the Cardinals going to actually be a squad? I don't know. Could the Rams be really good? I could see it. I, I, I don't know that that'll happen. There will be disappointments, too. You know, like we might be sitting here right now talking about the Monday Nighter against Detroit on January 2nd, and we're like, ooh, NFC Championship rematch. Detroit might, might, might regress. Right. The 49ers might regress. I don't, I don't know. Like, so there's all these surprises. Look, expectations are inevitable, not just because the Niners are very good and have a great roster, but that's just the nature of starting a season. Um, we, we, like, listen to the Dave Fleming bite that we keep playing throughout the last few weeks. The day after Blake Snell signs, he clearly, and many of us, self-included, had expectations about the Giants. And I'm not saying those are even completely gone. It's too early for those to all be gone. But, uh, like, expectations evolve. They evolve as the season goes, and that's what I'm going to try to do. I've got a very healthy expectation that the 49ers will flat, like, be good. Right. But this whole, like, dominant, at least 12, 13 wins, roll through this schedule, grab the one seed, off we go, Levi Stadium, couple games, Super Bowl. My goodness, it just, like, it doesn't usually work that way. It almost never works that way, especially when you look at, you know, how these games come up and what the, the stack of the games is. And you've got eight before the bye, and you've got Kansas City coming up, and they're off a bye, and that game is before you have your bye, and also you've got Dallas coming in the last game before your bye, and they're coming off a bye. So when you start to look at all these games, when they fall in the schedule and where you're going to be, and, you know, and we can talk to Alex Smith and Brock Purdy and Steve Young all about this. When you play, you know, eight straight weeks, no matter if it's a Thursday, a Sunday, a Monday, and you're going, you know, the, the routine – of a game week, practice, walk through game, practice, walk through game, travel, all the rest of it, it becomes tiring and you're not going to be at your best in all those games. Uh, no question. I mean, and I saw that they uh, uh, fifth most miles in the NFL. That seems right. And, and part of that's just being a coastal team. And, uh, and so you got to go back east. Uh, they go to Tampa, I think, right? They go to they go to Green Bay and they go, Miami they go and to Minnesota. Buffalo, they go yep. to Minnesota. Yep. They kind of like, yeah, those are those are big trips. But a lot of rest for teams going against them. A first place schedule. I mean, just think about the quarterbacks that this team is going to face. There are not a lot of good ones in the NFL not on the schedule. Like, who are the best quarterbacks in the NFL not on the 49ers schedule? Joe Burrow yep, and Lamar yep. Jackson are currently not on the 49ers Justin schedule. Justin Herbert would be... Uh, okay. Justin Herbert is not on the 49ers schedule. C.J. Stroud, I guess you would... I mean, sure. we're going C. down Stroud, the list, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah Jalen Hurts. not on the schedule. Jalen Hurts is not on the schedule, but I mean... Jimmy Garoppolo, not on the schedule. <laughs> yes, he is, twice. Oh, never mind. <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. I was just trying to be funny. Does everybody forget? <laughs> you forget that he's a Ram. He's a Rams? Isn't he? He's a Ram, right? Jimmy Garoppolo's a Ram. Lucas was reluctant. Even know. Yes, I, I no looked at the Higgins. He's like, I don't know. This is, <laughs> May, May is, I, I, I missed that one month. It gets tough. Like for NFL free agency, you're like, right. wait, what? Right? 
I think I even heard uh, was Goo asking Spadoni earlier if he's like, is he your guy for the Raiders this year? He's like, he's not on the Raiders this year. <laughs> so I'm thinking, no. But I get it. Like you, you like that free agency thing. Doesn't that feel like it was five months ago? Totally. Oh, with, no. yeah. With everything that's happened since, right? Yeah, he's on the Rams. And a lot of that, it's like you know, you get to August and camps are open. It's like, oh my God, that's right. Right. So and so's on. So and so. Uh, you know who's on the 49ers this year? The guy who popped Aaron Rodgers' Achilles. Really? The 49ers this year. Leonard Floyd. Leonard Floyd. It's Monday night, let's do it again. First okay. game of the year. No, don't do that. No, you know what I'm saying. Like, it's the same guy. If I were Aaron Rodgers, if I saw that schedule come out last night, I'd be like, oh, God. I got to play in that game again? Yeah, bummer. And Leonard Floyd's on the other team again? That's got, that's got to give him the willies a little bit. Totally. So anyway, but, but just I think your point is is well taken about the schedule and the team. And think about last year where the Niners were five and zero, and they won by twenty three, seven, eighteen, nineteen, and thirty two yep. in their first five. Then you lost to Cleveland, Minnesota, and Cincinnati. Bibbity bobbity boop, Boom. as you like to say. You lost three in a row to yeah. Cleveland was a playoff team ish. Minnesota, Kirk Cousins played phenomenal, fine. You lost to Cincinnati in a scheduled loss, but just like that, you go from 5-0 and and, boy, undefeated, am I right? 17-0, and it's on the table. I mean... You lost three in a row, whammy, and then you came out of the bye and you won six in a row. So you were asking me about me forecasting two five-game win streaks? Well, yeah, because they did it last year. They won five in a row, yeah. and then they won six in a row. They could. They but, could. But that season was, to Steve Young's point, there was a lot that went perfectly. Right. And I don't mean to say Until that. Until Christmas, he said. Well, right, but I don't mean to say that to make it sound like the Niners got away with one or got breaks. They were, in my opinion, the best team. That's the problem. They yeah. were the best team, and they didn't win. Yeah, and they that, were, that like, I think is what he's talking about in terms of breaks is because you got – you went up against a Patrick Mahomes team that was quote unquote down. Called him down. Right. They won the Super Bowl. Right. Well but, but he's not wrong. Exactly. You like they were not a high powered offense last year. Right. You did hold them to two touchdowns. In fact, in regulation you held them to one. You you didn't have to go to Philly in January. You didn't have to worry about Dallas in January. You went through all of this and had the second half lead and had Mahomes largely under control defensively, and all of that added up to not good enough. Right. And 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 certainly at least offensively, you were healthy. You got to February with Brock and Debo and Brandon and George and Christian and Trent and Kyle, and we go they're all ready to rock. And you could not get to 20 points. Right. And, and, and you, did, you did not win. And, um, and so that's troubling because you do look at this year's schedule, and I do see Jordan Love, Jared Goff, Doc Prescott, Matt Stafford twice, Patrick Mahomes, Josh Allen, Tua, Aaron Rodgers, on and on and on. That's their schedule this year. And so uh, and, and we have no idea – what Greenlaw's status will be, right. the, this whole thing is going to be hard. So whatever that record ended up being last year, and what was it? Was it 12-5, and five, I think? I know one of the games, you know, they punted there yeah, at the end against the Rams. 12 um, Boy, I would take the under. I would take the under on the Niners' win total this year. I would take the under. Under 10.5? I saw it at 11.5. Okay. I wouldn't necessarily take it at under 10 and a half, but if the Niners are a 10 or 11 win team this year, that would not surprise me. And by the way, if they're an 11 win team, I'll take it. If you offer me that right now, I'll take it. And I know how some people yeah. will, will receive that because you're like, they're better than that. And it's like, it's not that they're not better than that. 11 and six is a really good record. There are a ton of good teams. 11 and 6 means you will be playing in January and you will have. Yeah, your... you probably are playing that first weekend, but you're probably Maybe. hosting. Maybe. 11 and 6. I don't think 11 and 6 gets the bye. Uh, well, 12 and 5 did this year. So 11 and 6 is on the table for the bye, for sure. Yeah. I yeah. don't see, you know what I mean? Like, I don't see an NFC team where you're like, that team's definitely doing 12 or 13 wins this year. Yeah, I'd have I don't... to look at Detroit's schedule and, you know, outside of Detroit. 
I mean, you look at Philly and Dallas, that division is not going to be yeah. a cupcake, no cakewalk, and nobody in the South, I think, is dominant enough to really run the table at that level. I think the NFC is a little bit of a mishmash. And, so. and by the way, just asking the Niners to go get the bye, like, uh, that's a lot to ask. One team gets the bye. Right. So, yeah, they may be the two seed. They may be the three seed. I don't think that's the end of the world. Uh, but Well, it was two years ago. Well, it was yeah, the end of days, and again, Brock Purdy's arm fell off. Does the arm fall off if Sorry, you're at Brock. home? You know, I, I, right. I, like, I, I don't know. I'm not going to put that on not being the one seed. The bottom line is, is I just know that this is going to be a whole thing. This is going to be an experience, and, and twists and turns and injuries and frustration to, to just assume 12 or 13 wins when you just like what what with what we just read off in your way all the rest all the travel all the cold the, sure. the green bay the buffalo back to back ah, i mean th th this thing's gonna be hard it's of course it's gonna be hard and i think you don't have to look much further than the division and see that uh, arizona is better seattle is not worse they might be better with a new defensive coordinator and the rams are still a very good team they're they're very much a factor and that's 60 or 17 games are against divisional teams that are you know not pushovers by by any stretch so just your your very divisional games i think are going to be tough in and of themselves and then you you talk about all the difficult games out of conference and you know the one-off games tampa and Dallas, and Kansas City. Those are your three one-offs, and then you have the AFC East and the NFC North. Not easy at a conference. Um, I tell you what, Steve Young said it, and I know that there are certain people in this town that when they say it, you listen a little closer, and you believe them when they speak. And Steve is one of those guys. And I was glad he said it, because it's true. It's absolutely true, and I think uh, it's something to keep in the back of our minds um, going forward with 49er football in this era. Um, it's hard to imagine this upcoming season sort of laying out for the Niners the way this one did. It's hard to imagine. doesn't mean they can't win. doesn't mean that it won't end up going better, but God... Man, they should have had it. They should have. They should have had it. And if you think about last year, just, you know, while we're, we're talking about what Steve Young had to say, if you want to talk about what went right versus what went wrong, what really went wrong last year in the season? Uh, well, you say in the season, which kind of my – the first answer I was going to say was Dre Greenlaw – Ter okay, tearing his Achilles Fine. on the sideline. That's in the second half of the final yeah. game that you actually were able to what, get to. I'm thinking about the run-up in the regular season. Uh, uh, what went really, I mean, McCaffrey healthy, Debo mostly healthy, no, Brandon I, healthy, George healthy, Trent healthy, Brock okay, got better. This is going right? to trigger a bunch of people, Okay, but it's the first answer that comes to mind. Um, the hiring of Steve Wilkes. Yeah, okay. And I don't mean that to blame Steve Wilkes. I just mean that clearly that was wrong. People yeah. were yeah. not on the same page. Yeah. People were not whoever's page was right and who was wrong. We we've had that discussion. I'd have to say I'm built for but, this. <laughs> but when you say this, you didn't mean the 49er DC job, did you? No, I'm built uh, for these these road shows. I it, love it, it here it, in San Jose. It it, it, it didn't work. It, the, some of the players were clearly frustrated. Kyle and Steve weren't on the same page. I still look at this whole situation and scratch my head as to why Kyle hired Steve Wilkes. If that was kind of what they were asking for, you know, they wanted someone to blend into their system, then go find someone who does your system. Right. And and so that's that, actually a really good answer. What went wrong yeah. is that relationship. That's what went wrong. Yeah. And yet you still went uh, 12 and 5 in the regular year and you you were able to win a couple of playoff games and you got to the Super Bowl where your defense, honestly, wasn't the problem. You didn't lose the Super Bowl because of Steve Wilkes and because of the defense. Correct. You lost it for a number of small reasons. An offensive lineman going the wrong way. Brock Purdy not seeing an open receiver. Whatever you want to nitpick as to why you lost. I don't think that Steve Wilkes and his game plan and the defensive calls were much of an issue in the Super Bowl? No. no there were a couple great. of plays that yeah, you, know, you would look at. Well, yeah. They, when you got to the end, um, there they, they were, were gassed. Well, they were gassed, but there were some questionable setups and approaches 
when you're facing Patrick Mahomes in a situation like that, right. you've got a third and medium. Uh, they gave him opportunities where it's like, dude, that's candy from a baby for Patrick yeah. Mahomes. If you're just going to give people that much space, that's getting a little bit into the weeds and a sure, little too technical. Sure. Um, yeah, I don't think that that relationship worked. That, that right. That's my first answer. Uh, but we can keep talking.